Thank you for joining us at uh, Beer Fish Fanatics. And this episode is actually brought to you by Whisker Seeker Tackle. So make sure you guys go to whiskerseeker.com for all your catfishing gear. Enjoy the episode, guys. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I think I've been, cause, uh, since the whole family's been sick, uh, I've been kind of not eating very well. <laughs> so, uh, I think I've been eating a lot of meats this holiday season and I feel a little tingle in the foot right now for my guy. Dang. Fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. All right. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Good to go. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beer Fish Fanatics. This is Granny with Ma Pop Fishing. We have Kit with the Fishing Kit YouTube channel. And today, as you guys have probably, if you're watching on YouTube, we are not in each other's companies. Uh, we're actually online, and the reason being is because I have a household full of COVID people and flu people, <laughs> little people who's got a combination of those and have a boss lady who has COVID. So I don't want to be passing it along. Um, if, if our, uh, cause we, I think fishing kit myself, we actually had some guests that we were going to have on and totally, if they're listening to this, totally apologize. We have it rescheduled like twice now. It's my bad on that. We won't tell you guys who the guests are. We'll, we'll have to, we'll leave it to you guys to, to see on down the future who the special guests were supposed to be. So I apologize if they're listening. Um, my whole family's got it, dude. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty sad. Well, hopefully they, uh, start feeling better soon. Yeah. Yeah. You and me both. It's, uh, I'm telling you my, uh, my five-year-old, two-year-old has the flu and COVID. So Crazy. It, it's a, uh, it's a deadly combination right now. The kids are struggling, but you know, they're fight. Hey, they're tougher than me. Cause, uh, my ass would be crying and all okay. that crap. Uh, yep. They're tough. So is what it is. But, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, I don't know if you guys heard or not, but I'm drinking a little seltzer. I'm doing the high noon. Uh, I, I might grab a beer here. We'll, we'll see. But, um, I, I do have a, a little bit of a tingle in my foot. So I think the, the gout masters are knocking on my door this holiday season. Oh, well, I got the, uh, the Bud Light, the light version of Budweiser for those that don't know. <laughs> there you go. Cheers, man. Cheers, dude. Um, yes. if you guys want, you know what, this, uh, this episode is probably coming out right after Christmas. So everybody Merry Christmas. Hopefully everybody has a good safe holiday season. If you're in the, uh, the Midwest of Iowa, you're probably enjoying the, the frigid minus 30 plus degrees windshield right now. I want to say, right. Kit, you think it was about, yeah. Yeah. Windshield probably minus 30 to 40, but you know, it's it's a uh, nasty weather blizzard storm this uh, this past uh, this whole past couple of days. So hopefully everybody's being safe. But uh, I think uh, everybody's a little at least ice fishermen are a little bit excited. I think they they consider it built ice building time, right? Would you say? Um, man, the snow though. I wish the snow wasn't here. But we didn't get as much as they anticipated, which is a good thing because remember we're like, holy shit, we're gonna get like six to eight inches. Yeah, we didn't get that. So luckily, I think we we saved ourselves in that sense. We didn't get that many. We got probably at least here in central Iowa, we got about three inches, I want to say, and it's blowing off. Not completely, but it's blowing off some 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 of the snow, I think. I don't know. I think it, some of it blows off more blows on. So it's the wash. You're right. Actually, no, you, you're kind of right on that. Cause yeah, you, that's very true. And then, and then it creates some, some drifts, some four foot or not four foot, but like, like a foot, you know, drifts that it kind of sucks and you can't really tell. So, um, I think Derek, we just had him on our podcast recently. Uh, he, he's been out there. He's been doing some, uh, I guess you can say ice fishing God's work going out there and checking ice for everybody. Huh? Well, yeah, I mean, I haven't haven't been following too much, but uh, we wanted cold weather. Now we got some cold weather and uh, people like me are kind of complaining like, man, it's a little too cold. I mean, you know, <laughs> dial it back a little bit, you know, we I know there, there's no uh, in between. We, we were kind of hoping no snow and, and around zero degrees, you know, that actually about 30, 20, 20 degrees would be ideal for it to build ice and be cold enough. But 
yeah, it just went uh, completely to the minus 30 windshield right now. So we're we're struggling. So people who are listening from down south, you probably because we have some Alabama listeners, some Texas listeners. Yeah, you guys don't have to deal with this minus 30 below windshield, which kind of sucks. But it's building ice for us slowly. I, I think um, – I'm hoping next week I can go, I, or at least this week, towards the end of this weekend, maybe after Christmas or the day after Christmas, I'm going to go check some local ponds and see if I can get on um, once the kids are a little bit better. Because I haven't been fishing. Have you at all, dude? The last nope. couple weeks? Yeah. So I have not open water fished and I have not iced fished because, I mean, <laughs> if it wasn't for the, you know, blizzard yesterday, mm-hmm. I probably could have gone out like tomorrow. To, I guess I could still go out tomorrow. But conditions have been really shitty these uh this whole week. Yeah, it's uh it's one of those you want to go out and ice fish. You know, it's cold. We we have the gear uh to withstand the cold weather. But the thing is, when it's thirty mile an hour winds, but people don't understand is if you're setting up a hut, try setting that up in thirty mile an hours. Whether you're alone, even with two three people, it's a pain in the ass, and it's just blistering cold. It just sucks. <laughs> Yeah, you're probably going to end up breaking something or, you know, a glove's going to go flying <laughs> 25 miles per hour. Yep. Speaking of breaking something, I think it was uh, maybe like three years ago. I think uh, Magoo, Mark, uh, friends of the program, went with me on New Year's Eve, and it was like 25-mile-an-hour winds. You're right. That's the I think I learned my lesson, like trying to set up your hub. Well, I had a cheap – it was a cheaper hub back then. Um, in that type of wind, it broke the, it snapped the, what do you call it? Those, uh, the, the pole, the yeah, the pole, the, the support poles, it snapped it. Uh, and we, we still toughed it out. The, the pop-up didn't go all the way. It became in, instead of a four sided pop-up, it became like a three sided pop-up in the, in the, in the top was hitting us on the head, but we stuck it out. We were ready. We drove an hour and 45 minutes, you know, where we went and we're like, shit, we're here. We're going to fish. It was the worst ice fishing experience i've had in a long time it was it was like temperatures like today like minus 20 ish windy as hell and our hub broke and (laughs) it was it was we caught zero fish i remember i I think you guys asked me and i was like nah the weather looks like no 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 i think you were smart you're like nah you guys are stupid dude and we're like nah man we're gonna catch we're gonna kill it and then I think we texted you like, yeah, we probably should have stayed home. We caught zero. It was one of those. We came back like one of those frown face. We went, we went to a sushi place. <laughs> we, went, we went to a sushi place. You go, we and shit. We ain't gonna catch fish. We're damn g- eating good freaking fish. It was. Like, we went to a sushi up in Ankeny. Yeah. Um, the water, water. Uh, what you might call it? Waterfront. The, uh, waterfront. Yeah. We went there. We had sushi, and we drank <laughs> heavily. <laughs> we drank heavily to to make up for that day. I think Mark broke some rods that day too. He might have. It was it was one of. We, we, I think we, if he's listening or Bagu's listening, we, we we call it like every every uh, December thirty first. We, we we just call it, we would just remember that day. It's it's just one of those things. But go figure. Um. Oh, also another thing. Uh, the suits. I actually bought my my kids um two striker suits. I didn't realize they made suits for little kids. Dude, they're <clears throat> um so this is the thing. If if anybody's listening, you guys are asking, oh, I, I highly recommend this. I highly cause what what are bibs? Like snow bibs, they go for like twenty between twenty to forty, you know, a good a good snow bibs probably like fifty, sixty bucks already, right? For kids, toddlers. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So so I, I was talking to my wife and she goes, you know, uh, the girls they love to go ice fishing. Um I look at the pricing of the the striker bibs. I think these were the uh, the keeper. I think they're they're like two a year or two years uh, old, but you know obviously they have a clearance because they're from twenty twenty or twenty nineteen, whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. And I got them for about a hundred a hundred and ten dollars, like with tax and everything. Okay. That's about fifty dollars more than you know a really nice you know snow bibs. But dude, bro, because uh, I, I think I'm gonna do a video of this one. Um, it's worth it because the kids love it, number one, and it's, you know, it floats, which is obviously a good thing if they're going to go ice fish, but it's warmer than yeah. their other, and they have hella pockets, so the kids love it. So I, I'll, sh- I'll show you the video. I, th- I think I'm going to make a video with Scotty on this one. I think it's well worth the investment if 
if not for even if the kids don't ice fish, if you planning on taking them ice fishing, it's not a bad idea because I think it will last at least three years. The sizes, you know how you know you can extend the sizes. They have the inseams that you can make it longer. So each wow. bib, I'm telling you, because the kids love it. They're like super warm, floats. Um, they can use it. They're gonna actually. My kids are actually gonna be using it when we go sledding or whatever the case may be, just to play in the snow because it's warmer than their freaking their other uh, regular snow bibs, dude. It's crazy. Right. Uh, it better be for you know twice the money. <laughs> it is tw it is twice the money, but I'm telling you, I think it's worth it. And then whether it, any females or males that are listening, if you're gonna take your kids out, I mean your significant other, if they don't ice, or it's just a safety thing. I think it's always a good thing, just to have in mind that hey, the kids can float if, if shit should happen if they fall in. Right. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, it's hopefully it never gets to that point. I hope it hopefully doesn't, but I'll, I'll do a re review video. Um, I'll probably post it in the next week, couple of weeks or so, but it, the kids love it, man. And, and it's kind of, um, what's that word? A oh, swag. So, so Scotty was wearing it. Right. And she's like, she was like, you know, kind of want to show it off a little bit. So it's kind of a swag for the kids too. You know what I'm saying? They can kind of show yeah, off yeah. their gear. They can, they can show off to their friends or whatever. Like, Hey, I got ice fishing bibs. I think, I think it's kind of cool, dude. She was like, she was <laughs> stoked, dude. She was like, hell yeah. She was like showing, I, I should show you guys the picture, but yeah, she was super stoked. She's like, Oh yeah, I got ice fishing, like true ice fishing bibs. She felt like, uh, I think she felt like a true ice fisherman when she saw the bibs. She was like, oh, my, you know, that she mm -hmm. got she got floating when she goes. I. <laughs> so uh, I was telling my wife, like, let's throw the kids in the water during the summer and see if the shit works. <laughs> she was like, what? I go, I mean, you know, let's test it out. You know, next summer I go, the kids can wear it. And we'll, we'll see. Um, you're just going to let it dry it out anyways. But we'll, we'll, we'll throw it into somebody's pool. We'll throw the girls in somebody's pool and just see if it floats. It's the one way to test it out. I'll let I'll let you deal with the wife when you when you do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are my purchases. So every I think the last couple of episodes we were talking about like my purchases and stuff. That was one. I bought the pop up pub. Uh, I bought the uh, I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast, but I, I I bought the I finally I pulled the trigger on the auger on the light flight six inch though. I should have went eight. Huh? Should have got an eight. Damn it! I knew you were gonna say that, dude. Yeah, but, but you don't catch as you don't. Your fish aren't as big as the fish I catch. So wow, I he went there. Oh wow! All right, man. We should. We gotta make a challenge this year. Well, shit, no, we can't. You go way more than me, so I can't be like, who's gonna catch the biggest fish this year? You have more opportunities than me. Sure, but we shall see. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'm excited for the ice season. Oh, I'm slowly getting my gear ready. You get anything? Are you going to do? Bought, I bought yeah. a ton of shit lately. Uh-oh. What'd you get? So I got, uh, well, I got a new reel for Secret Santa. Ooh. What kind? Cast King Zephyr, I think is what it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen those. Those are those look nice, dude, for, for ice fishing. Yeah, it's like a 500 size. I, yeah. I, ran, I ran one last year, and I... I really liked it, so I bought another one for this year. Or I, I put it on my Secret Santa list, so now I'm running two of those reels. And I said I was going to get away from Braid, but uh -oh. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Braid again, for at least for, my, uh, for two of my setups. So I bought Ice Braid because I, I was just using regular Power Pro last year. Yeah. And like I, I mentioned it before because it, it would freeze and then – the uh the like the ice would stick stick to the to the line and it make it all like puffy and fuzzy it, yeah it, it basically you know kind of pull apart the fibers uh, but i i did end up buying the um the ice braid from uh i think suffix because uh -huh. i was running that on my other setup last year and i was feeling it. i was like oh it, there is like this little coating on there so that that's probably why the regular power pro didn't work out so good well you i mean you'll test it out this year for sure then you know we'll find out to see if i mean do you think it's going to help in regards to the line freezing or do you think it's going to help in regards to that that fuzzy part thing? both okay part well, of the like the line getting all fuzzy and torn up is because yeah. the uh you know it absorbs all that water and then the water freezes so it's kind of just messes up those fibers but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Hopefully, I find out maybe this weekend. Yeah, 
You get, you get any new rods, any new uh, tackle or anything? I got a new set of lights. Jeez. Because the, um, the set of lights that I had before, uh, I don't want to say the brand, but you know, they're pretty pricey and they're kind of, you know, considered a high tier ice fishing brand. All but right. man, those lights were garbage. I probably used them. <laughs> five times and oh, one of the uh because it comes with like two two sets of lights yeah uh, one of the sets stopped working uh, i think it was due to bad soldering because i i post about it in groups and people were saying oh yeah those lights are junk because it has cheap soldering so if it bends or whatever in a in a in the weirdest way it stopped working i tried emailing that company i never got anything back granted the lights were two years old uh, as of last year but i only used them five times still that's you know well i think you did mention it before they should have at least responded to you yeah at least email me back <laughs> like, oh there's nothing we can do yeah, you know, it, sorry. It, it's past the uh, the warranty or something or say something you know what i'm saying or here here's a gift certificate sorry buddy Right, but anyways, the new lights I got—they're called, uh, I think, Hog Outdoors or Hog. Uh, excuse me, let me let me look hog it up. Hog Outdoors. Uh, hog. Yeah, Hog Outdoor. Their uh, their lights. They're they're in. They're like metal bars. I got three of them, so I got three light bars. Okay. And uh, you probably whack you probably whack this table with them, and you'll Jeez. be fine. Okay. Yeah. Check them they're out. They're made out of metal. I don't think they're as bright, at least for the amount of uh, surface area. So they're 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 a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. But I got three three bars, so it should be brighter overall. Are you going to use that in your pop up hub, or are you going to use it in your flip? Probably my pop up. I, I got lights in my flip up already. Oh, you do. Okay, then there you go. Yeah. Oh, cool. We'll have to check it out. What else did I get? Oh, I got a new rod case. The Shields rod case. Another one. Uh, well, I had a Plano one before. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I could only bring like four rods with me. Oh. In that one, but now I could I now I could bring my entire lineup. Jeez. I got six rods. I could bring them all. That's not that bad though. I, I you think that's bad? It's not that bad. I think I have. Well, I have a lot of hand me downs too from the brother in laws, but I think total rods like ice rods, I probably have like close to like fifteen to twenty. <laughs> how many I, do you use on um, a given outing though on a given outing i probably use six so I, you're I, going through six rods when you there's because i don't like to retie shit when it's freaking zero degrees so i ha i tie oh man i tie different lures on different you know what i'm saying so I, i'm let's just say I, I i probably have let's say three three power noodles three or four i've i have to double check right I would have a, a, a different um, jig on each one, color, whatever the case may be, right? So that way I can change, interchange between those jigs. I don't have to change, I don't have to retie it. You see what I'm saying? So I just pick up the rod, use that one. Maybe it has like your, we're talking about the Wonder Bread that you're, you're trying to share, right? So yeah. one, one might be a Wonder Bread. One might be, all of a sudden you might be fishing next to me like, man, this gold jig is on fire. So. I might have a gold jig on one, right? And on the other one, I might have a silver or or, or, or one of those fluttering um, spoons. I forgot what they call What do you call those fluttering spoons nowadays? A What's fluttering that? spoon? I don't know. I, well, I know a fluttering spoon fool, but the um, – oh, now it's going to – my brother-in-law knows. He he probably knows. I know. I forgot what you call them. It's like a fluttering spoon. You know what I'm talking about? Can Why can't we, you just call it a fluttering spoon? I you can, but there's a specific uh, brand or name for it. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. But anyways, why does the brand matter? It doesn't, <laughs> but it's just it's a fluttering spoon. But anyway, so so that's what I would put on my 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 um, power noodles rods, right? So I don't have to retie it at all. I just interchange it, whatever's hitting, whatever's doing good, and then I might have three carbons, and then I would have. Um, a heavier spoon, maybe that looks like um, a silver, gold, and then I have another one that's glowing or something. You know, different colors, right? Or just something just a little bit different. So that's why. So I don't have to retie it. That's the reason why I go through so many rods, in my opinion. That for me 
it's just convenient so I don't have to retire anything in the cold. I just pick up whatever rod, and if that one is not working, I put, put that one away, and then I pick up the other rod and use that one. So what happens when uh, none of your rods is rigged up with the color I'm using? Then I'll have to retie. I mean, well, it depends. Is if if you're catching and I'm not, it, it all depends, my friend. Well, that was your whole reasoning behind yeah. it. That's how you started this whole conversation. Well, then, well, then I had to get. I guess I had to get more rods. <laughs> I'll have to bring more rods with the with the right color. But there's never enough rods for the colors. You know that, man. Well, it all I depends. Don't, I don't bring a rod for each color lure but, I have. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm just like, I mean, how 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 often do you use different? I mean, I guess I should. That's, that was one of the things um, I just I, I posted a video today. Um, I, I realized on that video, it's like I didn't change my lures at all that day. Maybe that was why I struggled. I was so I don't, I don't know. I rarely change lures. See, <laughs> I guess, man, thanks, man. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Maybe this year, I think this year I'm going to I'm going to try and change. You know, if that shit ain't working for like 30 minutes. Like, all right, let's try something else. If, if Especially the fish is coming up and going away, coming up, going away. Maybe it's my presentation, something. Maybe change the lure, change the color, something. I'm I'm like you. I'm kind of I'm well. Whether I'm lazy or not, I, I kind of stick to whatever I'm using. It's gonna work sooner or later. Exactly. Uh, if the fish don't want to bite it, they won't bite anything. That's what I was thinking too. But you never know. <laughs> you don't know until you you try something new. But all right, I'm doing the uh, the French beer now. Oh, Michelob. Michelob. Ultra. Ultra. Um, what else? What else did I get? I got a. Oh yeah, I got a new. I got a new bubbler, aerator. Bubbler. Oh, for your uh, for the bait. For my bait bucket. Yeah. Nice. So Angle came out, um, with another bubbler aerator. Uh -huh. So one of the complaints with their old aerator was it it was loud. Mm-hmm. And, true. Well, they came out with a new one that's supposed to be silent and it's rechargeable because I was buying, you know, what was it? D batteries and such a pain in the ass. Hell so yeah, they those came things out are with huge. Yep. Yeah, they came out with a rechargeable one. I was like, you know what? I'll just I'll just get this. So um, I haven't used it yet, but I'll use it here soon. Nice. Uh, so new bubbler. Dang, guy, you for a guy who said I ain't going to buy much this year, you freaking bought a lot all of a sudden. What the heck? Yeah, nothing. Well, other than the rod case, the rod case yeah. is pretty pricey. I mean, it's pretty nice though. Uh, what kind um, is that again? Did you buy? What was the it the Shields by? one? Oh, does it, is it kind of is this similar to the Eagles Eagle one or no? I think I know. Uh, it's, it's way sturdier than the. Okay, Eagle see claw. the e that that's why I sold my Eagle one. You're right. It's yeah, the, the sturdiness of it. Yeah, the Eagle Claw one's kind of flimsy. A little bit. Like I'd be like. If you drop that off the table, I don't know, man. I don't know what your rod's going to look like. It's afterwards. fine. I did it before. I had the ego rod holder. It, it was fine. But you're right. It's not as sturdy as I, I was hoping it would have been. Yeah, the, the the Shields one isn't cheap, but it's basically a dedicated ice fishing version of the case I had before. Because the case I had before was it, it was a it was a rifle case. I mean, it was a gun case. But it worked really good. Yeah, it was like you know weather resistant, and mm -hmm. you could, you know, they they were claiming you could drop it off a, you know, ATV, and all your all your stuff will be okay. And you can lock it, but the 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 shields ice fishing one you can't lock that one. I mean, not that that really matters, but yeah. But no, um, I I didn't buy. I was looking for. Um, I am looking for, I guess you can say, a, a rod holder for like one or two rods, like um, just days that I'm just gonna go, just run the gun real quick if I got like an hour. You know what I'm saying? Instead of taking all my my whole case. Well, that means you're gonna have to retie. No, 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 no. If I only got an hour, I ain't gonna retie shit. I'm just using whatever lure I got, bro. <laughs> you know, what I mean? if I got, if I only got an hour to go ice fishing, or may, let's just say even two hours, I'm only using two or three rods at max but if we're gonna go for the whole day i do want to have my arsenal i guess i should explain why i want to bring six rods yeah why do i you? don't retire well i got two bigger rods for the jaw jacker because I, I i'll probably be running two jaw jackers mm -hmm. as often as i can and then i'll have two carbons 
and two noodles with me. Yeah. I guess well, see, uh, they, the, they're going to be longer. They got two longer ones and two shorter ones. There you go. Because the longer ones I have are 32 or 36 inches. They're pretty long. No, oh, dude. The, the uh, whisker seeker are 38, bro. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the the longer sake rods. Oh, now. okay, okay. No, no. Oh, I almost forgot. Yep, you're right. I forgot to mention that because I do have those two catfish rods, too, that I use, too. So that's yeah. the why I have different different rods, too. You know, it, it makes it, and then you're right. If we were fishing inside the hub, I'm most likely not going to use a 38 eight inch rod inside the hub. You know what I'm saying? Well, in the hub, I would. Or in not flip, in a in a flip. Not in the flip. Sorry, in a flip. I mean, yeah, but uh, you know what I mean. So the flip over, I, I, I don't know, man. It's I think it's also you only need technically one rod. <laughs> well, because but, also another reason is because. Depending on if I bring a shelter or not, I would have to, you know, swap out rods and stuff. Here, I just put it all in one place and just go. Even if I don't use the rods, I'll bring them with me. Yeah. But before, I'd have to, you know, decide, okay, what rods do I want to take? I only have six. But, you know, at the same time, I could only bring four and I had to decide, okay, which ones am I going to leave? Now, I don't have to worry about that. I don't see myself owning... More than six, but you never know. I also didn't think <laughs> I was gonna buy all the shit that I bought this year. Uh, did you get the chance to look at the cover that the um, Short Rod Show boys were talking about for for your uh, Life Flight? I didn't look at it, but okay. I guess so, the new Life Flights come with it. Yeah, so, no. Shout out to those gentlemen. Uh, podcast, they 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 reached out to us that we should we should check out the magnetic. The thing is, is it from Strike Master, right? Strike Master magnetic covers for the light flight. Yeah, it's their own cover. Yeah, so I'm going to... They, they don't have no six inch. What the hell? So I'm a little upset about that. I haven't seen it. It's kind of disappointing. I'm like, how are you going to make it for the eight and the ten inch and they don't make it for the six inch? What the hell? I don't know. Maybe six inch ain't that, ain't that popular. Whatever, fool. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it, I think it's more popular than you think. I think six inches is always like the entry level and just a basic auger now. Well, I don't know. 80, you know, $180 auger. I don't think it's basic entry level. Well, not <laughs> touche, but it's still like six inches is always the, the, the middle ground, I think. You don't think well, so? That's because, I mean, hand auger, sure. But this is not a hand auger. True, but you don't. So you think eight inches is the 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 going rate now? For a powered auger, I think eight inches is standard. Really? Yeah. I was not six inch. I mean, you might be right. I I don't know. I always thought it was like gas six augers. They were always like eight or ten inch. I don't <sighs> think anybody was buying six inch gas, gas augers. Auger. Electric. I guess. Nah, I don't know, man. It's I'm powered. Thinking... Doesn't matter if it's gas or electric. Yeah, I guess the reason kind of... why six inches are popular with the hand auger is because it's less work. True. Damn! Now you got me freaking. Should have got an eight inch. <laughs> but I got a great deal on the six inch, so I can't complain. And like you said, like I said, you know your your fish aren't as big anyway. Here so we go again. It's all right, it's all right. George. I hope I catch a freaking monster this year and just. I hope you do too. Just to, make me eat my words. I'm gonna make you eat your word. That's for damn sure. I can't wait, and I'm gonna record that shit. I'm gonna be like, "This is for you, Kit." <laughs> I've caught I caught big fish through five and a half inch holes. It's a pain in the ass, but it's doable. Six inch. Oh, five, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, five and a half. What do you use? A K drill? <laughs> yeah, I was borrowed uh Rich Grimes K drill. Shout outs oh. to Rich. Oh, that was on that video that you had, right? The catfish where I yeah, yeah. broke I had a well, I didn't mean to do it, it just happened, but I broke the uh, catfish's uh spine pulling it up. Yeah, that was pretty that was a fat ass catfish, so that was a that was a doozy. It was fun. Must be nice. Got to do it again this year. Is that the uh, location I think it is? I don't know. Depends <laughs> what location you think it is. Is that the location where we catch wipers too? Sure. Okay. So there's a possibility okay. that we can we can catch that this year again. Oh, for sure. 
Yeah. But we should go down there uh, or, or over there or up there soon. Because yes. I, I, I did find out that it's I, after this weekend, it might be ready. Speaking of uh, being ready, so later next week, it's supposed to be 40s yes. for a few days in a row. And it, but it's, you know, 40s, no big deal, whatever, melt some snow, but it's supposed to rain like four oh, days in a row. Shit. So, okay, so this is just for whether new listeners, old listeners, um, people down south, Midwest. I mean, uh, getting to ice fishing. Rain is the worst thing for any ice fishing <clears throat> guru or just ice in general because rain will deteriorate any ice that's been built. Rain will just eliminate everything, make everything just disgusting, sloshy. It's just horrible for ice fishing, period. Well, it won't eliminate everything, but it just no. ruins the ice. It ruins the ice, but it makes it unstable too, though. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, yeah. it it'll ruin the top portion of the ice, and then let's just say it gets cold again after, and it refreezes. And then you got all these pocket bubbles, so then the ice is not as strong. So that's why rain. Yeah. Be, besides deteriorating it, it creates the un uh, the stability of the ice and everything. Um, damn, that sucked. You said four days of rain. That sucks. I'm looking oh. at it right now. Thursday, oh. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Rain, oh. rain, rain, rain. Fudge. That sucks. That's going to... Well, we'll see. You know, they, they were wrong. I mean, forecast was wrong this past, I guess you say, winter storm. We were supposed to get anywhere at originally between four or actually six to eight inches of snow. We only got three. So let's hopefully that they're wrong about the rain. Cross our fingers on that. Yeah, they could be wrong the other way. That's true, too. <laughs> You know, the, the, oh, you do that, only man. predicted three, but we got eight. <laughs> oh, man, that's true. Very true. Very true. Um, oh, also, if you oh, guys are following. It's still it's still it's still a week out. So you never know yeah, what it, never it know. could change. Very true. Very true. Um, you guys are uh, following me. I am no longer going to Colorado. So I'm a little sad, man. Um, I wanted to go out there, catch. Uh, I was talking to my brother-in-law. I was just texting him on the side. I really wanted to catch a tiger trout. Never caught a tiger trout. Don't think it's going to happen this year, everybody. Um, the family got COVID and got the flu. We're like, ugh, it just ruined our uh, holiday plans. I was going to go there for Christmas and New Year's, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a tiger trout and show fishing kit that, and then I was going to show you lake trout. I was, I was secretly going to target a monster lake trout, too, and I was like, so easy didn't even get that now i won't get the opportunity because they the whole family's a little under the weather this year so i'm gonna be local i think i'm gonna be local um for the next couple of weeks so except for the rain that's not a good sign i better get out there soon yeah i might try to get out christmas morning <laughs> for sure for real i think so by yourself my family my family's not huge on christmas i mean uh my my sister and stuff, they do stuff, but Christmas isn't huge in our family. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll probably get together Sunday afternoon, but um, I'm going fishing in the morning. <laughs> well, let me know. Maybe I'll go. Let me know. Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> let me know because I deserve it, man. Hey, it's been two weeks. I've been on. I, I've been Mr. Mom for two weeks, dude. Right, I, right. I take it, I and I, I haven't even taken a day off from work. So I worked, took care of all the kids through all the sickness. The the boss lady had COVID. She she's still dude. It's she's still getting through, trying to get you know the cough is it's it's rough. And that I've sucks. been I've been doing it all, man. So I deserve some ice fishing time. I think hey, it's not us you have to convince. <laughs> Very true, very true. Um, other than that, man, so anything else did you buy this year? Uh, that's everything I can think of. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. Anything, that's the only thing I, I can remember. Dude, I'm excited to get the pop-up to, to try it out with the kids. They're excited. I think the full door. So if you guys haven't seen... Uh, I did a, like a, maybe a five minute intro or a review of the. Uh, I got the Otter uh, Pro Lodge, Vortex Pro Lodge. That's what it is. The Vortex Pro Lodge. Um, 
it's it has that full door. My kids are excited. They're just so I set it up in the garage. They were just running in and out because they they don't trip, dude. It's a big deal. Like for some reason, the kids are like oh, it's a big deal because they can run in and out of the hub now without worrying about tripping in that shit. I'm surprised that's never been created before, honestly. Uh, Eskimo had it. Uh, no, it was just last year, wasn't it? I thought they've had it for a long time. I think this is probably their third season having it. No way. Are you sure? The the full door, right? The, the zip up? Yep. Wow. Eskimo just... was, was the first one. Yeah, they were the first. What? I don't, yeah, I don't think the last season was the first season. I think they came out with it the year before. Oh, I thought last year was the first year. I don't think so. Huh. But anyways, if anybody hasn't seen, go yeah, I'll go check out the video. But it's um, I think it's a game changing thing, dude. At least if you have, cause my fat ass trying to get through that little triangle door, it. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I at least once a year trip into it, and it's not yeah, like. But, I mean, people were using those forever. <laughs> very true. Very true. But it's a pain in the ass. I don't know. I don't know. Game changer is kind of a stretch, I think. I think it's a game changer for for a larger gentleman or lady. And if you have kids, it really is. Sure, sure. Man, <laughs> what, man, what were people what were people doing this whole time until but last year? Very, no, I, I, I'm with you on that. But I'm telling you the convenience of it. It, yeah, convenience, sure. It doesn't change the whole game. It's, it's not like it, revolutionizing ice fishing. It it makes it so much more enjoyable. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, obviously, you never tripped and fell going through Probably it. Probably have. Probably have. Okay. So you never had a kid go in and out, trip and fall. It sucks, yeah, I mean, man. I don't know. They're, they're kids. It happens. They trip and fall oh, all the time anyway. Look at this guy. No, it's I, I think it's um it's well worth getting it. I think it's that I, I really do. I think it's that important. I wouldn't say important that you can't go ice fishing without it, but I think it's You're convenient. making it seem that way. Like, oh man, it's a game just okay. revolutionizes ice fishing. Right. Ice it's fishing <laughs> has never been so good until <laughs> They came it, out with these full doors on hubs. It, hundred percent. I would say it enhances it a lot, kid. I, I, I kid you not. I, I feel that way. I don't. I don't feel like. Oh, I need to go out and get a new hub because I don't have a full door. It's not a need. It's a. It's a want for sure. Um, but boy, I'm telling you, it just makes it so, so much more enjoyable. When I have the kids and with me, I think it's going to be that way. I really do. Sure. Sure. I mean, I'm not saying it'd be bad to have it, but it's not like a game changer. It's a game changer, dude. It it, it, it makes me so much happier that I don't have. I just walk straight in and I can yeah, carry it, stuff straight in. I don't have to go through this. The smallest triangle of all time when I'm, you know, a big know. gentleman. People have been doing it for decades. Girls. True. You're right. <laughs> But it's it still sucks, man. See, if you were using, if it was like a, I don't know, a spoon auger, and then all of a sudden you got this light flight, now that's a freaking game changer. <laughs> this guy. All right, I'm going hardcore, man. All right, forget the uh, gout. I'll just blame you. Neon beer hug, Gold Island beer. Ooh, I like that one. Oh, you do? Is it good? I, I don't think I've ever had this one, guys. This is uh, from Forget. Goose Island Beer Company. Holy shit, 7% uh, IPA. It's not a double, is it? it might be a double. Let me double. Nope. It is not a double IPA. It's but I'm good, drink, uh, shout out to the brother in law. He hooked it all up. Probably because they don't drink IPA. So <laughs> I know. I, hey, if he's listening, I'm pretty sure he is. Bakim, shout out to you. I know what you do. I know you don't like IPA, so what they do is he saves all his IPAs. <laughs> so so every time when we go uh, meet each other, when we do our, our our camping trip, he gives me all these beers, right? I'm like, holy shit, man. I can't believe my brother-in-law loves me so much. Give me all these amazing beers, right? Come to realize, I go, I was talking to my wife the other day. I go, why 
is every single beer an IPA, double IPA, all this. I go, wait a second. And they're all from different companies. I go, I know what he does. Whenever he has parties or get togethers, uh -huh. nobody drinks the IPA. So he sets them aside. It's like, I'm just going give, <laughs> to give the leftover stuff that we don't drink to my brother in law. That's what he does. Hey, it all works out. It does mm -hmm. work out. I do help him out in that sense. So shout out to him. All right, I'm going to try this one out. Should I get another beer? I think you should. Might as well finish it off. Yeah, I'll go Ho get a holiday season. Holiday season, but I, this is my. Ooh, this is one. This king. Seven percent. That's why it's a little king. Okay, I'll be back. I'm gonna go get a beer. All right, everybody, we are back. What do you got? What's your refill? Uh, it is another blue can, but not a Bud Light this time. Hold on. Uh, oh. I'm I'm uh, working on. I'm working on uh, updating my GoPro because I've been going back and forth with GoPro about my audio issues. But anyways, uh, I have a PBR, Pabst Ooh. Blue Ribbon. Going old school. What was, yeah. You call that? That's the hipster beer, right? That's it what you is, call it? It was, it was the hipster beer, I think. Craft um, beers are kind of hip, hip. Well, they were. Hipsters was all into craft beer as well. I don't know. I don't know what hipsters are into anymore. <laughs> His neon beer hug is not bad. It's actually really good. It's pretty good. I like that beer. Cheers, guy. Cheers. Uh, so you are talking about you got a brand new what? Toy? Two? Uh, maybe not a toy, but I got this thing for, for my birthday. I haven't really used it yet. What the hell is that? Is that battery? Yeah, it's a it's a battery box, kind of like a. I think people know like Jackery. Oh, I think I know it's it's just like that. I mean, it's not it's a different brand, but it kind of does the same thing. Does it's it jump jump your car and stuff too, or no? Um, not this one, but it's got an inverter. It's got like the house plug, so I can plug in. Gotcha. I don't know. Maybe not a microwave, but maybe a TV. Yeah. Oh, I do. Uh, anybody who listens to this podcast, don't listen to the Joe Rogan podcast the other day. If if you guys like lithium battery, holy shit, that was. <laughs> well, what about it? Oh man, the what? <clears throat> how lithium batteries? What they come from? You don't want to know. It's <laughs> it's kind of bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty so's, bad. So is like a lot of stuff that very we true. Hundred percent. Nope. Every day. Everything that we use every day, holy crap, where it comes from and how it's uh, obtained, especially like lithium battery and all that stuff. Holy crap, it changes your your mindset and your viewpoints. So don't go listen to that podcast. You're going to be like, all right, I'm never buying lithium battery again. Yeah, that's that's impossible nowadays. Your phone has exactly. lithium. It's everything what it comes everything out, has lithium in it. I'm telling you, dude. What it comes, it's the, I guess it's an um, ingredient. There's, it's cobalt. Cobalt? is an ingredient inside all lithium batteries and out short, short or was it long story short um i guess the people in the conga are the miners for the cobalt stuff for the lithium batteries and the way they mine for it is very unethical for humans pretty much yeah yeah so there you guys go that's your guys tidbit if you guys if you don't listen to joe rogan you're all right if you do well you guys kind of know what i'm talking about it's like holy well, what's up it's not like you know joe rogan blew the lid off of it it's, no, no 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 but this I mean, this, this information was already out there yeah, so. yeah but this is eye-opening a little bit for people to to understand a little bit so it's cool sorry man we are off topic but yeah lithium battery i was just like holy shit on the other day but very true um I did get a new rod that I didn't anticipate this year. Damn it. Cause oh, yeah. I got a new rod, too. <laughs> <laughs> see? See? Uh, but, so this was the one. I, I, I was like, I think we did like a, a, a intro to ice fishing this year. Like, okay, what are we going to do? We're not going to get new rod. I did end up getting a new rod. Um, this is the oh, reason. Oh, I thought. I thought you were talking about our, our the whisker seeker. The oh shit, we can talk. No, rod. we can talk about that one too in a second. But uh, for ice ice fishing, I did not anticipate they get a brand new rod. But um, I went to freaking Saki's house. <laughs> yeah. I went to Sean's house uh, a couple about a month or so ago, maybe two months ago. Oh no, it was it was uh, um, what you call it? it was Halloween. So we take the kids Halloween trick or treating with Sean's kids. 
uh, and then of course I go down to the you know the sake fishing dungeon, and I see like, hmm, this is a nice pink ice rod. <laughs> it was a carbon ice rod, right? And then of course my daughter saw it too, and she's just like, hmm, Dad, that's a nice pink ice rod. I was like, all right, here we go again. Um, so I did purchase one ice, brand new ice rod this year from Saki Fishing for the girls. This is for the girls only. So he, he gave me a great, great offer, great deal on it. Um, so the kids got a new ice rod, a pink one. There you go. Nice. Nice. I mean, you know, you're just being a good dad. There you go, man. I was being a good dad. And it, yeah. The, so I brought it home that day. The wife, he's like, what the hell? You swore you're not going to buy a new ice rod this year. So I go, well, the kids, you know, it's nice, hot pink. and Yeah. The, yeah. It's like, I didn't know you were going to get a boat. Oh, it's for the kids. Oh, here we go. We got, we got to be careful on that one. That's trouble. We got, ooh, I, that, That's in the plans one day. I just don't know when. We'll have like, to. Oh, I didn't know you. Like, where does ATV come from? Oh, oh it's for the kids. Oh, that's on you, man. That's on you. You got to get you got to get I, the ATV first. I got to save money for a boat is what I need yeah. to do. Yeah, don't be spending your money, man. You're you're, you're the uh, the boat guy next year. That does, that's the uh, the plan. That is the plan, unless something crazy happens. But yeah, talk about the the new other rod that we knew and Bo got. Anyways, uh, Whisker Seeker, they had their Black Friday slash Cyber Monday sale and badass, uh, badass sale, yes sir. Yep. You know, so, um, you know, long time listeners will will know that uh, our sponsors tend to throw 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 our listeners a few bones here and there. So, I mean. If hopefully that makes it worth listening to, <laughs> aside from you know what me and you have to talk about, but uh, yeah, me, Bo, and Grandy are like, hey, you know, th- all these rods are on sale. Let's just go in together, and we just pooled our money and bought three rods. Yep. What did it have? It was a buy two get one free, right? Was it buy two get one free? Yeah, I think so. Dude, see you get so our listeners. Okay, so obviously you guys know fishing kit, huge catfish guy. Uh, I slowly got into it the last couple years now, uh, and then our buddy Bo, he he fishes with us and he fishes for catfish too. And then Whistler Seeker had this great deal. I think it was it was buy two get one free. That's a that's a steal, dude. If you can get three homies or three buddies, if you guys want to get a new cat, and it was the um, catfish and carp rod. Yeah, love that rod. So now I got yeah. three of them. <laughs> <laughs> you, but you say you say you were, you were just gonna get one just for shits and giggles, anyways. I think you yeah, were saying that. I had two. I was like, man, I kind of want a third one. Yeah, and so, this was the perfect excuse to get it. And third it one. worked out. And it was, you know what? Shout out to our sponsor. That was a great deal for them to do. Buy two, get one for free. I mean, if you split between us three, I mean, we technically got that rod for a, maybe two a third of what we would have paid normally. Uh, I think you got it for free because I owed you some money and I oh, yeah. need that money <laughs> <Yeah>. anyways. <laughs> hey, is what it, hey, it's not for free. If you you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but that that money was already you know it was it was a bygone <laughs> conclusion already. <laughs> it's all good, dude. But no, we're excited. Um, I, I, I'm excited. We we got to go pick it up from Bo anyways. Oh, nah, congrats. We, we don't need to use it for any time soon. Anyways. Very true. Very true. Hey, congrats to Bo. Uh, everybody he did have his baby. Nice and healthy. Yeah. Yep. Arthur. He Arthur. is, I want to say, three weeks old now. Maybe wow. four weeks. He's almost a month. Yeah. So we'll have to see if we can get, uh, we can get Bo out ice fishing this year. It's going to be tough. I know. I understand. Newborn baby and everything and life. It's it, it's it, it's a little. Uh, we gotta at least get them out once this year. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. I see in next month sometime. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think he'll be able to get out at least a couple times. I'd say. Yep, we'll make it happen. It'll be fun, dude. Try again. I think January should be a good. Well, we'll see. Like you said, this rain. Um, just a little, a little nervous now. I might have to get out before the rain starts because when the rain hits, we just never know. Like where the ice is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm debating about going out tomorrow, but man, it's still windy. It's still cold. Yeah. <sighs> That's why I was, I was, I asked you if you worked uh, next week, Monday, Tuesday. I might be able to. 
I mean, like I say, depending on the family right now, because right now the boss lady's upstairs trying to maintain the fort while the two little ones. So this is a crazy thing. The two little ones, the five-year-old, the two-year-olds pretty much got the vid and, and, and the flu right now. So I've been um, Mr. Mom for a while. So she's kind of holding it down, and we shall see. If they feel a little bit better in about three or four days, I should be able to get out, I hope. Yeah, I don't know. I'm if I don't get out tomorrow, I'd, I think I'm gonna try to get out Sunday. Anything? Yeah, any uh, species in particular you're gonna try and chase? If you do, yeah, right here, man, right there, that species. Oh, really? Right okay, okay. Oh okay. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. I want to start the season with a bang. All right, all right. Let me know, no, man. Seriously, uh, hit me up. I obviously, <laughs> I'm not going to Colorado, not going to Denver now anymore. So. Um, if the kiddos are okay, if they're feeling a little bit better, I could probably get out for a couple of hours. Yeah, I just, um, yeah, fish with stripes for those people that are just listening. Oh, yeah, I'm, Sorry. I'm pointing at my little picture Avatar. right next to me over here. Fish with stripes, that would be nice to catch. Um, that would be a nice start off this the year, I guess, in a way. With the yeah, nice there's, bang. there's a few species we could catch there. So there's, okay. I mean, if the wipers don't work out, I'll go target crappies. And then bluegills are going to be mixed in with the crappies anyway. So, yeah. Is, it, is there any local uh, species we can catch that you haven't caught yet through the ice? Carp. Ooh. Remember, I want to catch a carp this yeah, year. Yeah, you did mention that. You're right. You're right. Um, hey. Hey. Oh, I was I was watching this video today. This guy, uh, Koa, Koa Outdoors or Koa something fishing, but he he does a lot of educational stuff. He's like a biologist, but anyways, uh -huh. he was um he was on a road trip or something trying to catch different species, and he used a a cliff bar to catch carp. Cliff bar, the whole cliff yeah. bar, or he broke off a chunk and you know just watered huh. up on a hook and threw it out. Might be worth a shot. He caught a few carp with it. <laughs> was it open water? Yeah, open water. It was open water. But was it, it's just chocolate, right? The Cliff Bar is like chocolate. It's like a and... granola bar. Chocolate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peanut butter. I mean, I think that's all stuff people would use for for carp anyways. Oats and peanut butter or some kind of you know sticky jello or whatever. Hmm. So corn, you, you wouldn't use corn through the ice? Yeah, I could. Do you think that would be beneficial? I don't know. I mean, we never obviously chase carp, carp, carp through the ice. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I'm like, have you actually have you YouTube or Google to see how do you catch carp through the ice, or has anybody caught a carp through the ice? I think there's only a few videos out there. People, they, I mean, they use corn. I wouldn't say it's beneficial, but that's like the go-to bait. Huh. Okay. Or if I I could try to get like boilies or whatever. Mm -hmm. Basically, they're dough bait. That hmm. could probably work. Or I could make pack bait, but man, I I don't know if I want to go through all that. But I'm guessing dead sticking corn might not be a bad idea. Well, yeah, I mean, dead stick, whatever. Hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah, I think we should target car. Let me know, man. You want to target car? I'm down with that. We had this conversation before, by the way. I know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go do it. We should do it, though. We actually have to actually do it. Talk yeah. about it. We got to do it. Carp would be, I think, carp is very doable. A local species that we haven't caught through the ice yet. Like smallmouth, that'd be cool, but that'd be a lot harder because the numbers, we don't really have the numbers. Um, a muskie would be cool, but that same thing with the uh, with the smallmouth. I can't see, we probably have a better chance catching a muskie through the ice here in Central Isle than, than catching a smallmouth. A smallmouth. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. At least the body of water and what we have. Right. Because there's more bodies of water with muskies than smallmouths yep. around here. For sure. Or, uh, like, what? What? I wonder if I could catch, like, a buffalo. Ooh. But buffalo, what do they... What would you use? If you were going to chase buffalo through the ice, what would you use? No idea. See, I don't even know where to find them uh, through the ice. Through the ice. You'd have to go to the river. No, you might be. You don't have to. I mean, they're in lakes. If yeah. you can find them in lakes. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. 
That'd be yeah, weird. I don't know where they would congregate in lakes. If you could find out where that is. Dude, a buffalo through the eyes? I would be. Dude, my six inch auger? Hells no. I You're going to need 10 inch. No. Oh, it's on the buffalo. It's getting big, bro. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. talking the uh, on the high end. Of, uh, yeah, I guess you're. No, yeah. yeah, you're right. I think. What about drum? I, I wouldn't mind See, catching a drum. Through we talked. We talked about that. But how do you target drum through the ice? Just gotta find them. Gotta find out where they're because they, they'll they'll hit. I'm pretty sure they'll be just like open wire. They'll hit pretty much anything. Okay. You know, there isn't like a special drum bait that you have to use. True. Uh, there is. You're right on that. There is no specific drum bait because they just hit whatever. Yeah. But it'd have to be a, it'd have to be a big drum though. I wouldn't want to catch a, you know, ten inch drum. I mean, I'll take a a nice two pound drum. Well, I want to catch like a, at least a five pound drum. Oh no, I get you, of course. But right, who who doesn't? Right? Who doesn't want to catch a five pound drum? <laughs> I don't know, man. Five pound drum through the ice. The fight on that, I bet you'd be, I'd be badass, bro. Uh, yeah, I've never seen it. Never seen it on video. Actually. I've seen a drum caught on one video, but it was just a kind of accidental. So it was, there was no fuss about it. You think they go dormant at all? I doubt it. Okay. I don't know. We don't, that's a man. We should ask the uh, biology fish biologist who knows drum. I doubt they go dormant. I've seen drums piled up on the ice before. Okay. If you're the guy doing that, yeah, don't do that. You're, yeah, don't do that, guys. You're don't. just trash in the place uh, you're not doing the lake any favors by taking out you know 10 drums yeah there's no probably meat. thousands of them down there same thing with the yellow bass guys please don't do that and i i understand certain bodies of water it's considered invasive don't just do that just throw them on the ice because they're considered trash fish take take them with you yeah if you're take just gonna toss them 100 percent. you can eat them they're good. Drums or, or yellow bass. Just cook them right. That's all it is. Yellow bass is fine. I like yellow bass better than crappie or bluegill. Like we, we had this convo before. My brother-in-law doesn't eat fish. That's the only fish he actually ate and liked was yellow bass in Colorado. Yeah. Only freshwater fish. Yep. Um, Cool, man. That's a good idea. Let, all right. Let me know, though. If you if you really going to chase the carp, let me know. And... Like you said, the drums you just gotta find. But if you really want to chase the carp, I'm I'm down with you on that one. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, I've been I've been looking at the survey data of carp infested waters. Uh huh. So <laughs> so so it, there's a so, few. I've been doing some research. Cool. I I know some spots. I just don't know. If... Actually, I have to double check if we can get on the ice there or not. If the uh, legality wise, if we can get on it, you know what I mean. Uh, we can talk about it after. I think yep. I know where you're talking about. But. Okay, we'll talk about it after. Um, got anything else this week? I know we talk a lot about uh, ice fishing. Uh, we're just gonna keep it a little bit short, guys, because you know we're not together pounding beers. But you got anything else this week, guy? I don't know. Just looking forward to that first time out on the ice this season. I, I probably could have made it happen already, but. Uh, work kind of sucks. By the time I'm off work, it's For sure. four o'clock and the, it's basically getting dark already. Yep. Hey, I think uh, I think now it's supposed to be. Isn't it supposed to? We're gonna get a little bit more daylight now all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was winter solstice a couple of days ago. So yeah. So every slowly. Yes. Yeah, one minute. Right? Is it yeah, one minute? One, it's about a minute a day. <laughs> That's how it works. So uh, we we get extra daylight one minute a day from now until I think is it summer or spring or until whatever. the summer solstice. There you guys go. <laughs> uh, no, if you guys are listening this far, appreciate you guys. Hey, don't forget, guys. So when this episode comes out, I think you still have was it five or six days left. Make sure you guys go check out the episode. We'll put I'll put it up here, or if I think I am any, I'll put it up here somewhere, guys. Uh, go check out the episode that we had with Gus from Justin Bait and Tackle. Um, yeah, you got a message because we there. There's been a great response. Appreciate everybody. Uh, get into the giveaway. It's completely free. 
Huge shout out to Gus from uh, Johnson Bait and Tackle there for for doing this giveaway for us. But go and listen to this podcast. Somewhere along the line in that podcast, Gus mentioned a beer name that he came up with, which is pretty badass. I think it's pretty badass. And uh, message myself, Fishing Kit, and you will get into the drawing because you got until January 1st. So make sure you guys do that. Uh, And then other than that, make sure you check out this gentleman's YouTube channel, Fishing Kit. Uh, he's getting up there, grown, grown, grown. Oh, grown. I got a little bump. I know. Like I saw, this I saw past that. Week. Saw that. You get a little bit bump. So get his ass. Go check his YouTube channel out. Homie over here catches a lot of uh, catfish, a lot of fish with stripes. So you guys will probably enjoy that. Other than that, also check out my pot fishing. I put up some videos once in a while. I caught three fish on the last <laughs> video, which was. Find by the kids because the kids love the fish that they got a chance to eat. That's the biggest. Hey, speaking of that, this is what I'm going to do from the videos from now on. I think what I'm going to do. Um, what did I learn from from that outing of the fishing? What did I learn from this last outing? I should have changed my lure, dude. I was stuck on. I was so stubborn, stuck on one lure. Maybe I would have changed it. Who knows? I don't know, man. But who's who's to say that would have made a difference? It, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. But you don't know until you do it. Yeah. It's good. Like you said, it could have been either way. But other than that, man, everybody, totally appreciate Oh, don't forget, leave a review if you guys can. Um, that definitely helps us out. Share. Let's get us growing. Because yeah, yeah. We get to creep the uh, podcast up there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, man, I, I, honestly, uh, we truly appreciate you listening to us this far. So other than that, everybody, till next week. Peace. All right, guys. Uh, Merry yeah. late Christmas and Happy oh, New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. I don't know. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys after the New Year. Maybe you will have something in store for y'all or not. I don't know. Peace.